Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to design a 3D printable adapter to mount the Hamira hot end and extruder combo onto a 3D printer. To do this we're going to start with a concept and then do some reference geometry and then finish with the critical design process. So let's get started. Before you do anything, try and think, draw or model what you want to try and achieve. In other words, a concept, something that resembles what your final goal is. If you don't think you can draw the whole thing that you're trying to do, maybe just do it from the side, do it in 2D if that's easy for you, and just do it from a couple of angles and eventually you'll be able to figure it out a little bit more easily. If you're really fast with 3D design, you could do this directly in the CAD software. But I would recommend against it on the basis that it can be very easy to not see the limits of your 3D design skills and it then limiting your creativity. If you have the physical parts already, put them in place, put them where you think they're going to go. It just gives you a really good idea of things that will work and things that won't. You can build those into your concept, your drawings and then into your design later on, which will basically increase the chances of a successful design because you've removed issues that you found early on. Next, we need to move on to what I call reference geometry. By that, I mean all the information, the 3D information that already exists. So in this case, it will be the printer and the hot end and extruder, the Hamira. If these parts are open source, it should be much, much easier. The 3D or 2D drawing should already be available, in which case you can just use that information and bring it directly into CAD. It'll be a whole lot quicker. If you do have to measure, use calipers rather than a ruler or tape measure, just because it'll be more accurate, and always measure things at least twice. When you're taking these dimensions, look for any symmetry. Double check it with some rough dimensions, but any symmetry you do have should make the CAD process a little bit easier. Don't be afraid to round up or down a little bit, but don't get carried away. For example, if you're measuring something that's maybe 9.48 millimeters, I think you can probably safely round that to 9.5. Lastly, for the reference geometry, try not to get carried away. Some places where people tend to get carried away are threads of things like nuts and screws, flanges on nuts, again, there's more detail than you really need, and maybe teeth on the belts. While the belt itself has a certain size and that's important, the exact geometry of the teeth is not really going to impact our extruder adapter. So just don't worry about it. So this example I'm going to show you now is from my work on the Formbot Raptor 2. It's a closed source printer, so I'm going to be measuring this mounting plate using a pair of calipers. I've done some checks and it's mostly symmetrical, so my CAD will reflect that. The three mounting holes at the top are the only thing that are not symmetrical. Strangely, the spacers and wheels, although not critical to the main geometry of the adapter, it will help me position the holes in a place that I can ensure that I can actually assemble it. Obviously positioning a mounting hole directly behind a wheel would make the assembly process somewhat challenging. And that's really all there is to it. It's quite a simple process. You just measure it and draw it. Measure it and draw it until you've got all the information that you think you need. And remember, you can always go back and add things later if you get part of the way through your design or after your first iteration and you think, damn it, I missed that, or I got that a little bit wrong, you can adjust the reference geometry and then try again. Fortunately, the E3D Hamira is on the path towards open source. I believe that's the final intention, but I don't think it's quite fully there yet. But luckily, E3D do have a model on Thingiverse, which we can download and use. For now, the main information I really need from it is the mounting hole position. So I can just measure the distance between those and that information I can use in my design in the next step. So now we've got everything we need to really get into the main 3D design, designing the actual adapter itself. My tips would be firstly to keep it simple. Try not to overcomplicate things. Keep it small and as simple as you can. Start with defining the positions of the largest objects you're working with and work down to the smaller and smaller ones. As you go, always keep in mind how the assembly process is going to work, such as the length of screws that you're going to need and the standard sizes in which they come, as well as the assembly sequence. So what goes where first and can you get to the screws which you need in order to put it all together? You'd be surprised how often that can go wrong. Of course, if you're aiming to print your adapter, which given the channel, I'm sure you probably will be, make sure as you go along that you keep this in mind. Bear in mind the orientation in which you're going to print, the surface area contact that you're going to have, where your overhangs and bridges and things are going to be, and obviously try to reduce those where you can. 
once you get towards the end of your design phase, this is when you can start adding things that help with your 3D printing process, such as some fillets on the corners to maybe reduce warping, or some features on holes to make them a little bit easier to print, some elephant's foot compensation and other things like that. And lastly, you can then add some features to make it look a little bit prettier. Typically, people like to put fillets everywhere because it makes it all look nice and smooth and stuff in CAD, but in reality, that's really not going to affect you very much. In fact, adding fillets on downward facing edges can actually be fairly detrimental to the overall performance because you end up with a very strong, well, a very sharp overhang, which is extremely difficult to print. So you can add fillets, just be careful where you're adding those. So let's move on to the example then. Starting with this very simple extruded shape, this is gonna be the body of the adapter. The top mounting holes along the top obviously hold the adapter onto the main plate, and this four hole pattern will support the Hamira. I've added some circular and hex shaped counterboard holes for the heads of the screws for the Hamira and for the nuts for the main mounting holes. Then I added a small mount on the side for the BR Touch with a large chamfer to aid in rigidity of that extruded shape. And finally, fillets and chamfers to improve the print and overall appearance. Now all that's left to do is to print and assemble it. The assembly process is relatively painless. After getting all the parts needed, I pulled the nuts into the hex shaped counterboards to hold them in place, which makes the assembly process much easier later on. Mounting the Hemira was very simple, but because these square nuts in the body are a little bit loose, they're designed to be, you have to kind of turn it upside down to make sure the nuts fall onto the screws. Three screws into the original mounting holes hold the Hemira very nicely in place. And lastly, this small camp on the back completes the mounting. And there we have it, a very simple rigid mounting system for the Hemira extruder and hot end. It was fairly easy to design and also easy to print and assemble. Thank you very much to E3D for providing the Hemira. There'll be a link in the description. In the next video, I want to fix the bed situation, so we'll definitely run through that, and I'll be able to give you some tips on how you can add a mains powered bed. Well, swap out your normal one for a mains powered one, especially on larger printers, this can be really helpful. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.